Hi, I'm Michael Howe with Glueware. In this highlight video, we're going to take a look at the new native Ansible capability introduced in Glueware 5.4. So here we are in my Glueware instance, and let's navigate straight into the Network RPA app where this is introduced. So I'm going to jump into my workflow library. And then just in terms of a quick introduction to Network RPA, to make this very brief, I'm going to navigate into a workflow that's already been built. But just to illustrate, you know, Network RPA provides the ability to build workflows or end-to-end -end process automation using this drag-and-drop interface. So the majority of things that you're doing within Network RPA are orchestrating things within the underlying Glueware apps like Device Manager, Config Drift and Audit, OS Manager, Configuration Management. And so those apps have tasks or capabilities that have been deconstructed that you're able to drag and drop in, like capturing configurations, comparing, and then doing conditionals and notifications. So you have this interface, which is a no-code interface, drag and drop to build process automation. This is typically where a lot of third-party integrations happen, like ServiceNow and others. Some of those third-party integrations we build natively. Others, we leverage an integration with StackStorm. So prior to Glueware 5.4, if I look up StackStorm, any of the StackStorm packs you have installed with your instance and synced with Glueware, those become available to drag and drop in. So if you have the Ansible pack, you could, you could have and previously dragged and drop in tasks to run Ansible playbooks. Now in Glueware 5.4, if I search Ansible, we provide a native task to run the playbook directly. So there's quite a few benefits in this, but one is that you don't have a third-party dependency on StackStorm. Not all of our customers install and run StackStorm. But second, it gives us deeper logging and more programmatic, programmatic interaction with running that playbook. So let's jump into an example and show you how this can enable you. So I'm gonna exit out to my workflow library. And just for demonstration purposes, we're going to go ahead and create a new workflow called Ansible Test and next, and I'll keep this private. Uh, if I made it public, I could then share it with other users of the system and I could tie it to different role-based access controls. So let's keep it private for now. And when I start building a workflow, I just have the canvas and basically it's empty here. So our focus is on the Ansible playbook, uh, running the playbook. So we're gonna go ahead, search for that capability and just drag and drop that task in. When you drag and drop a task in, you click on the task, and then the configuration field appears on the right here. So let's take a look at what is required to configure and run an Ansible playbook. Well, I'll just say, first of all, there are two prerequisites. One is you have the playbook on an external system that's running and working. So you're going to be leveraging, or Glueware is going to be orchestrating the calling of that playbook. But here in Glueware, you're not building the playbook. You're not you know, configuring it directly. You're just, we're running it and then essentially orchestrating it as part of a process automation. The second thing you need to do is within your Glueware system, you configure the server details. So how we connect to it and the credentials. And so that's been configured. So we're gonna select, we're configuring to what I've defined as Ansible Server 1. The next thing we have to do is configure the required fields. So first and foremost is what playbook are we running? So this demonstration playbook is testing server, so it's called server.yaml is the playbook name. Then we want the, the inventory location. Uh, anyone who knows running playbooks requires an inventory file, so we have to tell Glueware where that inventory file exists just to make sure we're able to run it successfully. And then we give it the working directory of the, for the files. So we give it the working directory where those play, that playbook exists, and that's basically all we need to do. You can, you have a number of other things that you could do in terms of advanced options. I can check and verify uh, the Ansible version. I can configure timeouts. I, if I need to sign in to become a, a user with higher priorities, I could configure that. I can configure the level of verboseness. We'll go ahead and make it a high level verbose so we get more information. You, then you have the standard options of passing things like tags or environmental variables. So all of those would be added to the capability when Glueware is running the playbook itself. So with that being said, our task is now configured. We just apply what I configured. We see the task goes configured. 
We save the workflow and let's go ahead and validate it. This will check that it's configured correctly. I have everything I need to uh, validate that. And then let's go ahead and run a test. So by running a test, we're going to navigate from the editing of the workflow over to the workflow activity. And here in the workflow activity, we want to know what's happening in detail with this. So we're going to look at the logs. OK, my Ansible playbook has now executed, or the, the workflow containing that Ansible uh, playbook has completed. So what we're going to do is walk you through a bit of what's happened here within the log file. So in the log, I do want to highlight you get very detailed and granular capabilities in terms of ex knowing exactly what happened. And we're starting the workflow task run Ansible playbook. So what it's doing here within the running of the playbook is first there's several pre-checks where, as I was mentioning before, we SSH into the remote system. We get that detail. We're then looking at things like we want to understand what directory in. So Glueware is looking at the current directory. We're then ensuring the playbook and the, the directories provided all are working and functioning. So we're looking at the work, the directory, we're changing into the working directory, we're verifying the playbook exists, and we're, we're ver verifying the inventory file exists as well. So there are pre-checks associated with just ensuring that we're going to be able to successfully execute that playbook. We also capture the Ansible version. So this is part of a, a check that you can run. And by running that command in the log, you capture the Ansible version as well as the underlying Python version installed in the system. So everything's good here. Now we're at the point where Glueware is going to execute the playbook. And you get quite a bit of detail here, but I just want to call out that when we're executing the playbook, we're doing, doing it in a specific way. We're specifying the output B in JSON. This enables us to programmatically interact with that output. We are also setting things like the uh, output file, including creating a, a new custom output file name, as well as the output log. So that way, all of that information is captured. And again, we can interact with it. So upon running, and we can see it run successfully, we can take a look at the output file. And in that output, we have the JSON objects we were looking for. So what this provides us is programmatic ways to go and check the result of the playbook to see, you know, we could uh, associate pass-fail information or pre-check, post-check with it. If I wanted to check a server and understand if the failure count was zero, or if I wanted to know if the change count was more than one, this is now a JSON object I can interact with programmatically to extend how Glueware programmatically interacts with the playbook. So now what we've done is, just to summarize here, we've taken an Ansible playbook and we built it and we verified it and it runs successful within our system. So now when I go back to my library, if I grab another uh, workflow that I've already been working on, and now let's say with this workflow, I want to incorporate an Ansible uh, playbook as a verification, I just search for Ansible, I drag and drop my playbook in, I configure it as I was shown, I've shown, and I run it. So this, again, has a number of benefits. It could be a, a playbook that is setting up a system that, um, you know, doing things in an environment that Glueware doesn't support natively. It could be executing a pre-check. I could drag another one in towards the end to execute a post-check. You just have a lot of possibilities and capabilities. So now that we've seen the new run Ansible playbook task in action, let's do a quick run through the benefits. So first and foremost, you get that drag and drop of Ansible playbooks into your network RPA workflows. So this removes any dependency on Stackstorm and you get this easy drag and drop to find your playbook, your connection and your inventory, your working directory and you're off and running. So this enables you to easily integrate Ansible into any existing Glueware workflows. I mentioned a couple of use cases, but if you want to use Ansible to set up an environment or to run a pre-check or run a post-check, there's just tremendous amounts of use cases where incorporating Ansible playbooks as tactical automation work really well within a Glueware automated workflow. So 
The other piece that I was just be beginning to describe a little bit is that now with these playbooks running, you get data structures out of them. And those you can programmatically integrate with and dive deeper into the validation. So with that, you can expand compliance, you can expand security checks, and again, many other use cases. Ansible has a broad amount of coverage where Glueware is focused on the network layer. So Glueware's core capabilities is around automating routers, switches, firewalls, load balancers, the, the sort of network infrastructure. Ansible expands into servers, other things like uh, CICD pipelines, really lots of other components that is outside the scope and the focus of Glueware. So by incorporating playbooks and Ansible coverage, you really can greatly expand the coverage of uh, automated workflows driven through Glueware. So what are the business benefits? One is that you really can lower your operational overhead and simplify troubleshooting by integrating playbooks into workflows. So this is kind of the notion of like when you have multiple tool sets, if you can integrate those tool sets and leverage them together, you're going to get much more synergy and uh, much more value out of using those things together. And then so from the additional saving component is that in most of the organizations we work with, you have folks that use Ansible, more of the Ansible experts that are kind of part-time developers and work on building scripts and other things. And then you have other network engineering folks who aren't programmers and developers and really have more core strength than just network infrastructure. Well, this really enables those non-experts to use playbooks in the automated workflows. So once these playbooks are written and validated, and let's say they run troubleshooting or they run a setup or they run a pre-check, post-check, they should be reusable by all the folks in your organization. And so now by incorporating and being able to run these directly, directly within these reusable workflows built in Glueware, you now open up all of that to be leveraged by your entire organization. So with that, thank you for your time and interest in Glueware. To learn more information, go to Glueware.com or uh, connect to us and reach out, request a demo or request a meeting. Thanks very much for your interest in Glueware.